So praise the Lord. So listen, um, Genesis 31 verses 9 through 16. Um, now, this sentence here in the notes, whether or not Zil, Zilla, uh, I'm sorry, Zilpa and Bila knew, I'm sorry, whether or not they had knowledge of that previous note, I'm going to have to read the whole note, otherwise yeah. it won't make yeah, any sense. Yeah. Rachel and Leah no longer identified with their father. Chief Bella wasn't even that. <laughs> Rachel and Leah no longer identified with their father. They were now the mothers of the 12 tribes of Israel, including the sons of the sons that were born to Bila and Zilpah. Now, whether or not they knew that they were the mothers, the mothers of the 12 tribes of Israel, or understood that, we don't know. But they did know that their father had sold them for his own prosperity, the opposite of what he actually received, and they did not like that. They didn't like it. They told Jacob that, remember, last week. Mm -hmm. What is more, they felt that what God had taken away from Laban, their father, and given to Jacob, their husband, actually belonged to them. So my son, Deshaun, those two points, what are, what are we talking about? Just to bring us, let that be our beginning tonight. Uh, we're talking about uh, when Jacob first arrived uh, at Laban's camp or on Laban's property to live with Laban. He, um, they made a deal and Laban basically sold or bargained his daughters uh, in marriage to Jacob in return for his service. Uh, to gain prosperity, the prosperity that he knew, or the simple fact that he knew, that God was with Jacob and he wanted to receive those blessings. Now, how can we be sure that's true? Uh, it, it says it in scripture that Laban, uh, Laban actually told Jacob that he was blessed. And he knew yeah. God was with Jacob. Yes. And he knew, we're not going to turn there, but I think we said it last week. The Bible says Laban knew that he was being blessed yes. because of Jacob, yeah. which means he was getting richer. Right? Yeah. That's what it's talking about. Okay, go ahead, son. Uh, and it says uh, the opposite of what he received because in the end, uh, we know that Jacob, well, God gave Jacob basically everything from Laban. So everything that belonged to Laban, everything, all Laban's prosperity was then handed over to Jacob. You can take out basically and say that whole sentence. <laughs> and literally, that's what happened. Um, so where we left off last, last week looking in scripture, Laban doesn't say Laban was poor when Jacob left, but um, he didn't appear to be rich anymore. And somebody, um, one of you young people, did somebody in, in that family mention anything about that last week? Did somebody say something? Yes, Tolliver. Uh, Laban's sons were speaking to each other and Jacob heard it. And they were saying that everything that Jacob has was stolen from our father. And how did they feel about it, Symphony? They felt jealous. They felt jealous and probably mad too. All right, so that's good. That's where we are. So now I need, Symphony, I need you to read very strongly and beautifully as you always do each week. We have a lot of verses, a big chunk of verses here. It looks like it's gonna be about, uh, what is that? Eight verses, check the verses 17 through 25, okay? Because we have a lot of notes to look at, and I might interrupt you here and there to say things. Okay, go ahead. Then Jacob rose up and set his sons and his wives upon camels, and he carried hey, away. What sons? Uh, yes, yeah, Symphony. His 12 sons? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just checking, but your father's right. Yes. His 11 sons. His 11 sons. Who was missing? Daughter. Yes. Benjamin. Benjamin hadn't come yet. Good. I trapped you, see? Mm -hmm. And what? And wait, camels? Mm -hmm. Jacob had camels? Yes. yes. Uh huh. Um, listen, in those days, in that culture, camels were a sign of wealth. It's mm -hmm. like today if, if people have fancy cars and nice everything. <laughs> okay, yeah, really. Nice everything. Everybody didn't have camels. In fact, Abraham didn't. Eat. Well, he, Bob, I'm not sure. Abraham was very wealthy. We know that. So I, I, re I retract that. But um, camels. That's wow. That's that's very uh, wealthy. One other thing. Oh, what wives? His wives. 
Yes. I thought he only had oh, what? Okay, Olivia. What wives? Rachel and Leah. Yes. And anybody else? <laughs> yes. Bella and Zilpa. Bella and Zilpa. Yes. So um, I, I was going to ask more questions about that. I don't need to. I'll stop there. Go ahead, Tiffany. So he gathered his wives, his camels, and his children, his 11 sons, and what happened? And he carried away all his cattle and all his goods which he which he had gotten, the cattle of his getting, which he had gotten in Paddan Aram, for to go to Isaac his father in the land of Canaan. And Laban went to shear his sheep, and Rachel had stolen the images that were her father's. Okay, hold on. Vincent, Laban went to shear his sheep? What does that mean? To uh, cut off the wool? Yes, why? Simply. To make clothing? To make clothing or whatever. Cotton. So <clears throat> that's, yeah, we still do that today. Well, I don't. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> they still do that today. They, you shear sheep every season. There's a season for it when the sheep get really woolly and you cut off their wool to use it. Does that hurt the sheep? No. Not at all. Does it hurt when you get a haircut? Well, if I cut your hair, it's hurt. He's just seeing pictures. He's like, oh, I've been meaning to talk to you about that. <laughs> okay, skip the accidents. The normal haircut. Does it hurt when you get your hair cut? No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> You wouldn't know. I never cut you. Oh, yeah. When you poke me out. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, Laban goes to shear his sheep, and what happens, Symphony? And, and Rachel had stolen the images that were her father's. That's up to 25. Oh, no. <laughs> and Jacob stole away unawares to Laban the Syrian. What does that mean, stole away, young people? He stole away unawares. Yes, tell him. Oh, I thought that was a hand. Oh. What does that mean? Uh, he took he took it away without knowing. No. That's a good guess, though. I see a hand. Go ahead, son. Explain to me. Oh, I thought you were reading. No, no, yeah, no. Yeah, explain it to um, me. Um, to steal away unawares means to do something without giving notice. So what did he, what did Jacob do with he his left family? Discreetly? He left discreetly and say it in the kids' language. Uh, he left. He snuck off. What I'm telling you. He snuck off. Now, how was he able to wait? Jacob had all of these camels, cattle, sheep, whatever, goats, wives, children, servants, possessions, and he snuck away. How in the world can he sneak away and Laban not know? Yeah. He lived three days away from Laban. How, how, how far did he live away from Laban? Three, three days. days. It, it would take Laban three days to get to Jacob's house. Okay, Jacob had three days in which to do this. Okay, now how is it that they lived that far apart? I, I thought Jacob lived on Laban's property. Yes, Laban had a big property. Yes, and so how did it come about that Jacob lived three days away from Laban? Do you remember he that? That's not a real important point. Yes? He, did he send, he sent him away? Laban did that. Yes. Laban, put his, they, Laban created that distance. Laban thought he was doing that so he could trick Jacob. He could have some space to trick Jacob. But who was really behind that? God. Uh, yeah. God. And why, what did God do in that space? Multiply his uh, Yes. Jacob had plenty of space and time and distance and all of that for God to work the miracle that we talked about last week. And it's going to be in here. All right, go ahead, Symphony. So he fled with all that he had, and he rose up and passed over the river and set his face toward the Mount Gilead. And it was told Laban on the third day that Jacob was fled. And he so first of all, what does fled mean? That's past tense of. Left. Yeah, who said left? Yeah. That's excellent, Isaiah. But it means something stronger than left. But that's really good. Yes, yeah, Symphony. Flee. Flee. And what does flee mean? Mean. Run. Yeah, he ran away. He snuck off. Let's get out of here. All right. Um, uh, something else you said. Oh, so Jacob left, and how long was he gone? Three days. three days. He was gone for three days. So if he lived three days away from Laban, and he was gone for three days, how much distance was between him and Laban then? Six days. 
six, six days. days. He was six days away from Laban at this reading, at this verse. Go ahead, so he continues. And he took his brethren with him and pursued after him seven days' journey, and they overtook him in the Mount Gilead. Who took his brethren? Who Laban. took their brethren? Laban. And he pursued, what does that mean, pursued after? Chased after. He chased, chased after. Jacob. So he discovered Jacob was gone. He's like, what? Jacob left? Mm -hmm. Everything's gone? And he chased after him with his brethren. And how long did he chase him? Seven, seven days. days. For seven days. How long has Jacob been gone? Six, Six days. Six days. How long did he chase him? Seven, seven, seven days. days. All right. That's going to matter. That's why I'm hammering on that. Was that 25? No. 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 Keep reading. And God came to Laban the Syrian in a dream by night and said unto him, Take heed that thou speak not to Jacob either good or bad. Now, first of all, there's an interesting note here. Laban the Syrian. Laban is called a Syrian. I'm not sure because, as you know, I've I typed this stuff a long time ago. Mm -hmm. um, at this point, wow, it was two more than two years ago. Anyway, but my point is, I don't know why Laban is called a Syrian because he is the brother of, of, brother of uh, Rachel, uh, Rachel, who is, no, no, not Rachel, he's the brother, of, he's the brother Rebecca. of Rebecca, who is, who is, who's Rebecca? Isaac's wife. Uh, I forgot. I forgot. I forgot. Yes. Yes, he's, so I don't know, I'm, and I'm probably going to mention that in here, knowing me, that would catch my eye. So they call him Laban the Syrian for some reason. But also, God speaks to Laban. Did he say he spoke to him in a dream? Yes. yes. Okay, he speaks to him in a dream, and he says what? Basically, he says, don't say anything. Don't say anything to Jacob. Uh, One way or the other. Isn't that what it says? Yeah, good yeah. or bad. He said, good or bad, don't say anything to Jacob. <clears throat> so first of all, Laban is chasing Jacob, and he's got plenty to say, mm -hmm. and probably a few things he wants to do. He's on his way, and God speaks to him and says, don't say anything to Jacob. Laban must have, that, that must have been quite a dream. All right, continue, Symphony, please. Then Laban overtook Jacob. Now, what does that mean, overtook him, young people? I know, you don't know. He caught up to him. He caught up to him. Thank you, son. That's exactly what I was going to say. He caught up to Jacob. Go ahead, Symphony. <clears throat> then Laban overtook Jacob. Now Jacob had pitched his tent in the mount, and Laban with his brethren pitched in the mount of Gilead. That's it? Yes. Okay, let's look at all of these notes. A, camels. And some of this stuff I might have already touched on when it's going to stop me. Jacob's wealth had begun to resemble Abraham's chapter 24.10. Let's read that because I want to see why I said that. Um, maybe I didn't know that Abraham had camels. I don't know. But chapter 24, 10. Somebody read that. Go ahead, follow it. And the servant took ten camels of the camels of yep, the Yep, stop right there. Abraham had camels too. Mm -hmm. I didn't remember that. But I was, um, so it, it's noted here. Jacob has now, but well, wait a minute. Hmm. I didn't think about this when I typed this. But doesn't that stand to reason? That's a, I don't know if young people would read. That's an old fashioned saying. If God said what to Jacob? Blessing. Not, yes, but what blessing exactly? Um, You're going to have the blessing of Abraham. Wouldn't it stand to reason that he would have the same wealth that Abraham had along with all the other blessings of Abraham? So that's not that's not a mystery. God said, I'm going to bless you with the blessings of Abraham. So he had the same wealth Abraham had. All right, let's look at note B. Images. Young people, images are idols. Remember it said Rachel took her father's images or one of his images that means took one of his idols an idol is a false god okay now false gods are we know this in this church there's only one god and what's his name Jehovah. so a false god since there's only one god a false god has to be another being right mm -hmm. another being what is the being that pretends to be a god that gets considered a false god. Any, any adults can help out, of course. If you, yes, Symphony? A demon. A demon. What is a demon? What's a demon? Yes, Vincent? A fallen angel. A fallen angel. What do you mean a fallen angel? I know what you mean, but I want the people watching us to hear you. What is a fallen 
angel. Yes, Tom. A fallen angel is when the angels that Michael cast it out. Yeah, that Michael cast out. What is he talking about, uh, uh, Isaiah? Um, he's talking about the angels that had a war in heaven with God. Yes. That came with the devil. Yes, the they they went with the devil. They were God's angels. They went with the devil. There was a war in heaven. Michael, God's warring angel, cast them out. That means threw them out of heaven. They are no longer angels. They're no longer called angels. They don't look like angels anymore. They don't even have all their angelic powers anymore. Why not? Where did all that come from? The glory of God. It came from God. It came from, I know you were going to say that. I'm sorry. Symphony's like, she's like, man, he's so, does he, he doesn't have to raise his hands. <laughs> no, listen, they got all of that from God. So when they left God, were they able to keep that? No. no. So if you leave, leave God, are you going to keep all that God gave you? No. No, no, no. Don't make that mistake. Don't think that. Don't let the devil trick you to, into thinking that. You are who you are because of God. God. And I'm thinking of another name. Jesus. Jesus. Okay. Because of Jesus. That's all right. Because of what he did on the cross. That's why you are who you are. What you are. I wanna, I'm going to use this verse. I don't have my phone with me. It's in uh, 2 Corinthians 5. Somebody look it up for me. I believe it's 2 Corinthians 5. I could be off there. But it says he was made sin for us. Somebody, <laughs> no, you're not going to find it by flipping through your Bible. Somebody look on your phone. If you, wait, let me, these kids, they might be like, Pastor, no, it's right here. You, it was 1 Corinthians. <laughs> Wait, Somebody look that up on your phone. He was made sin for us. I found it. Of course. For he has made him to be what, sin Where is for that? Us. First, I meant 2 Corinthians oh. chapter 5. Woo! Scared me. 2 Corinthians 5, what? Verse 21. Verse 21. What does it say? For he hath made him to be sin for us. God made Jesus to be sin for us. First of all, what does that mean? Somebody tell me what that means. God made Jesus to be sin for us. Oliver, did you kill the AC? Did you take care of that? Take care of it, All right, let's pause for a minute just so we can get, get that done. So, and I'm gonna have you read the verse again. Oliver, read that for me. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us. God made Jesus to be sin for us. What is that talking about? Anybody? Isaiah. Oh, okay, Isaiah, go ahead. Um, talking about, um, Jesus God is talking about to lay our burdens down on Jesus so that, we don't no, have to have any That's great. That's true. That's true what you're saying. But that's, not, but that's not the answer. This is a big one. Go ahead, honey. He didn't just take on our sin. He became the actual sinners. And why did God? Yes, Jesus. Do you know? Now, this is not. The human brain can't conceive of this because it doesn't make any sense physically. You understand? The only way the human brain can conceive of something is if you can visualize it. You can say, oh, I understand. That's like when I, or I, I can imagine that happening. There's no such thing on earth as this. So the human brain can't even picture it. All right? But think about your sin. What is sin? Can you take sin out of your pocket and say, oh, here's my sin. <laughs> can you do that? No. Why not, children? <laughs> you can't do that. Yes. Because sin comes from the devil. Yes, but uh, uh, I, yes. Because sin is invisible. <laughs> sin is invisible. Uh, 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 yes, Rachel. Um, because because you say to yeah, <laughs> yeah, Jesus saved us. Sin is invisible. It's not an object. Now, yes, it's a spiritual. 
is spiritual. Yes, sin is spiritual. It's not sin is like love. Now, when I said like love, sin is not the same thing. It's not like love. It's not like love, meaning if you look at sin and then look at love, you see the relationship and say, Oh, I see. No. Sin is like love and happiness and peace and joy, things you can't see, things you can't touch. They are invisible. They are spiritual. Okay, you can't go buy one at the store and put it in your pocket. So, to think that God made Jesus to be sin, the brain cannot even understand exactly what that means. But I want you to think about your sin. What is sin? I, what is sin? That's a hard question because I'm going to get all kinds of answers. Yes. Uh, all unrighteousness is sin. All unrighteousness is sin. I'm looking for one answer. Yes. The spirit of the devil. Give me something else. I probably won't hear it. Yes. Sin is what made the devil choose to have an entity. Right? I'm not gonna get it. That's okay. Last one. All the y'all. All the. Yes, I see. 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 I was thinking of that one too. Because A M. Rachel just trying to. She's like, K. It's saying anything. Yes. I steal. Steal. Okay, he's still. He's really deceive. Okay, one more. Yes. Yes. Go ahead, Chris. Lie. Lie. We said that one. Yes, I said. Hit. Hit somebody. Yes. Manipulate. Make another image. Oh God. That yes, that's a sin. Okay, um, that's called idolatry. So yes, okay, no more. Listen, sin is something you do. Now I want you to everybody sit still and be quiet for a minute. I want you to think about that. Sin is something you do. If I lie, if I all those things. God made Jesus be that. He became lies. He became hatred. He became evil. I don't mean as a characteristic of his. He became wickedness. He became immorality. He became perversion. First of all, stop. <laughs> First of all, can you understand why Jesus was crying in the dark? Mm -hmm. People think that he was grieving so because of the abuse he was about to experience. And trust me, he wasn't looking forward to that. He probably was thinking about that too. In fact, we were talking about Luke earlier. Do you know only Luke said this? When Jesus told his disciples what was going to happen to him, they, they're going to take, come and get me and all that, do what they're going to do to me. And he said, they're going to spit on me. He literally, and Luke is the only one who recorded that. Uh, Jesus knew everything that was going to happen to him. He said, they're going to spit on me. I said, look at it. Should I take that? Y'all want to see that? Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Okay. Boy, you feeling, feeling it tonight. <laughs> Let me see. Let's see. Let me see if I can find that. I'm not going to spend a lot of time. Okay. Uh, let me see. Let me take a lot of time to look for that. Oh, right here. Then he took unto him. This is hello, I should tell you. Luke 18, 31. You know how I found this so fast? When I'm reading things, this is just just tell me this for fun. I remember my brain remembers the spot of this. That's why I was just flipping pages and I was looking right in this section. I remember <laughs> Mommy was like, what? Is he I, I remember, listen, I'm gonna show you. I remember that's how I find a lot of things. I remember that I read that right. Listen, I'm telling you, listen. I remember I read that in this corner. I just had to find the page. I knew it was, I didn't know it first, but I was like, there was right here somewhere. I was like, no, it's not that page. And she's like, 
Can we have a normal pastor? Are y'all getting too hot? No. no. Okay. No. So it's Luke 18, 31. Then Jesus took unto him the twelve and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem. And all things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man shall be accomplished. For he shall be delivered unto the Gentiles, and shall be mocked, and spite, spitefully entreated, and spit it on. I read it, I said, wow, Jesus knew everything that was going to happen to him. But now let's get back to my very important point. Yes, it reminds me of what God says, what, uh, if I... Do anything when I tell my prophet. Yes, exactly. Jesus knew. So, yes, I don't mean to say Jesus wasn't worried about that. He wasn't like, eh, that'll be nothing. I'm sure he was feeling that too. But I have always felt since I was young, and I heard people preach on this and teach on it and talk about it, I have always felt that there was something else that made Jesus behave the way he behaved. In fact, I want to look at it. It might be Luke. <clears throat> It might be Luke again. I want to look at something. I want to look at how Jesus behaved. Or it might be Mark. Let me see. Because one of the writers really describes what Jesus went through when he was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane more than some of the others. So let me see if it's Mark. <clears throat> let me see. The Let's see. <laughs> Praise God. Let me see now. I want y'all to hear this. I want y'all to learn this. Oh. Wait, huh? I don't know what I'm looking for. You can't be that smart. <laughs> or, wait a minute. Okay. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Good Lord. Uh, okay, let me see. Let's see now. Yeah. Yes, Mark. Mark. Mm. I don't even remember how we got here. I gotta trace this back one time. Mark 14. I mean, I don't remember how we got here from the commentary, but we'll find our way back. Mark 14, uh, verse 32. 14:32. Listen to this. And they came to a place which was named Gethsemane. And he saith to his disciples, Sit ye here while I shall pray. And he taketh with him Peter and James and John and began to be sore amazed. He began to be sore amazed. Let me see what my note says here because I know I'm, I'm sure I made a note on that. What did I write? <clears throat> and this is how I get the commentary, by the way. This is going to be in the commentary one day. It's hard to imagine how Jesus felt and how he was acting. Um, I don't have what I want to say, but I, I've studied that. Sore amazed, if we look that up, it means he was almost out of his head with grief and sorrow and pain and fear. He was almost out of his head. Sore, when it says sore, it doesn't mean like my arm is sore or I have a sore. It means incredibly and amazed. It wasn't amazed. When we say amazed, we mean a good thing. Like, that's amazing. It means he was, there's a word I want, but it won't come to me. Deeply distressed. He was deeply distressed. He was almost distracted. You understand? Try to visualize how he was acting. Okay? He was deeply distressed. In fact, he said, and another one of the writers said, what's what do you have? Uh, 
Oh, in verse 34, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. That's what I was getting ready to say. Um, That's the same book and chapter. I'm going to read that in Mark. And another, another one of the writers said, he said, my soul is exceeding sorrowful even unto death. He yes, did I say him? No, yes. well, I was going to ask after you finished that. He felt like dying. He felt, we can't, we can talk about this for five minutes and we'll be, I'll just be stammering and trying to get words. Mm -hmm. But I want you children and young people to understand, Jesus was almost bewildered with sorrow and sadness and fear about what was coming. All right? Let's continue to read in Mark. You want to answer your question now? Yes. Oh, no. Go yes, ahead. for you. So my question was, I know we don't want to stay on this long, but at well, what point you know. <laughs> at what point did he actually become sin? Was it in the garden? Yeah, no, I, it, that's a great question. I will deal with that. So he take it with him, P. James and John, and began to be sore amazed. Now the reason it said began to be, he was they had left the last supper where he was talking and praying, John 17, that prayer, washing your feet, all of that, and he was fine. He was, I'm sure he was feeling something, but he was fine. But when it actually came time for this to happen, and he was going to the garden, he became sore, amazed. He became bewildered, deeply distressed with sorrow and sadness and fear. Fear. Yes, that was fear. What did he say? Yeah, not, not, we didn't read it yet. What did he say to his father? If there be any other way, let this guy pass. Let it please. Fear. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Okay? I know what's about to happen to me. I, this is, uh, um, uh, please, please. There has to be another way. All right? So he began to be sore amazed and to be very heavy. That's what you said, deeply. Very heavy. We've been there, but not like this. So we, when it says very heavy, we can get a tiny picture, but not like this. No. Never, never like this. And very heavy. And saith unto them, my soul is exceeding sorrowful unto death. Tarry here and watch. Now this is the part I, was going, I wanted to get to. That Mark, what Mark says that nobody else says, and I like Mark's description. And he went forward a little. He went a little further. He said, y'all stay here. So he came with all the disciples, all 11. Mm -hmm. Judas was gone. Then he takes Peter, James, and John a little further and says, he tells them how he feels. He says, I'm going to pray. Stay here with me. And then he goes further by himself. Does he walk and just goes and sits down on a rock? He's going to pray. Does he say, because Jesus prayed every night. That's another thing, Luke says that the others don't say. They talk about Jesus praying at night in the mountains. Luke says he ministered all day every day and then he stayed up all night and prayed. Luke literally said that. I was reading that last night. Anyway, I'll show you that. But anyway, does he walk and sit down and says, Father, my Father, how do y'all say it? Father God, my Lord in heaven. And, uh, do you think that's what he did? Let's see what he did. It's going to tell us right now after he told them to watch with him. And he went forward a little and what? Fell. fell on the ground. He fell on the ground. Why do you think he fell on the ground? He tripped? No. Children? What what is it? Why would he why did he fall on the ground? For, yes. I'm so yes. Um, from the weakness, he was so weak. He was so weak. Why would he be so weak? Distressed from the being distressed. Distressed. He, he couldn't even stand up. I've never done this, but I've seen this done in real life. But we've seen it a lot in movies and TV. It was a dramatization. But you've ever seen it, seen somebody come in like, oh, and they just fall on the bed yeah. and just and start crying or just. They're so depressed, they feel like they weigh a million pounds, mm -hmm. and they just fall. Jesus fell on the ground. He was so heavy and so deeply distressed. He went forward a little and fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. Okay, I don't need to read 
and see something. I'm looking for something. No, I can stop there. Now, all my life, for some reason, maybe the Holy Spirit was showing me something. People have all I've, people have always given the impression that Jesus was behaving that way because he was afraid of the physical. Rachel, sit with sit with Daddy, okay? That's all right. You're not in trouble. Just sit with Dad. That's right. Nice and loud on the mic. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, all my life, people have intimated in preaching and teaching this that Jesus acted that way and felt that way because of the beatings mm -hmm. and the crucifixion he was about to face. Mm -hmm. First of all, yes, that I'm sure that was in it, mm -hmm. but I, I feel in my spirit. I've always believed that wasn't you no, know, that wasn't why Jesus acted that way. A lot of the Jesus. a lot of the remedies that they offer Jesus to. He would have been if he rejected them, which doesn't seem like it was, that's what he was, of course, that wasn't his main focus. He rejected no. the vinegar. He kept rejecting the things that would numb the pain. That they him. used yeah. to numb the pain. He didn't even, he didn't even drink at the Last Supper. He said, I'm, the next time I drink with you this. will be with, with my Father in heaven. So, I believe Jesus, what Jesus was feeling was what I said a second ago. Now I want to call it back to your mind. I want everybody to sit quietly, like I said. Think about sin. Sin is what you do. Jesus became, God made him become, he became perversion. <laughs> you he became perversion itself, sexual immorality itself, lies itself. Yes. Also, I was thinking that he probably was so far from God. Yes, be, he had to be. You can't be perversion and be one with with God. Yes. Also, while as he sinned, he drinks the wrath of God, which means now that he is sin, now the wrath of God, which detests sin, is now also in you. It, and it's, and it's, it's eating. Deep. It's eating you up. And God poured. Life. God poured out. Poured out his wrath on Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus who had never. In other. That's proof of what we said a second ago, that it wasn't it wasn't really the physical beatings that Jesus was, was afraid of or, or, or dreading. Yes. The scripture says it pleased the Lord to bruise him. His father was about his father was about to the reason I paused, I was like, you can't how am I going to even explain it? We can't even explain what it means. For the wrath of God to be poured out. You read Revelation, you'll find out. You read what God did to what God did to the earth in the flood wasn't a complete depiction of the wrath of God, nor was it. It was Jesus says, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, he said, for you, Sodom and Gomorrah will be like nothing they, compared yes. to what God is gonna do later. Jesus was about to be the recipient of the full vent of the wrath of God at sin. That's what had, drove him to the garden and caused him to fall on the ground in sore amazement. When I hear the word sore amazement, I, I think of almost delirium. Mm -hmm. No, he wasn't delirious, but you understand, almost delirium, like I can't, I can't, I can't even pray right now. I can't even think right now. Jesus did that for us. But let's get back to this. I know how we got to this. We talked about idols. Jesus was made sin for us. He became sin. And last thing, why did he become, why did he have to become sin in the first place? Yes, Tom. Yeah. Yes. Because he never sinned, he 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 didn't. It wasn't his own act. But why did he have to become? Well, because sin has to be punished. Sin had to be punished. God had to vent his anger at sin, not a person. You understand? God's anger is not a person, not at a person. God's anger, God's vengeance is against sin. 
Scripture says the Lord has no pleasure in the death of a wicked, in the death of the wicked. It's not gonna, he's not gonna be pleased because I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill all the bad people. Then I'll feel better. No. The only thing that's gonna relieve God's wrath against sin is his destruction of sin itself. He had to kill, he had to punish, he had to strike out against sin, pour out his wrath on sin. So sin had to be on the cross. Sin itself had to be on the cross. I know that's it. I don't know. Some of you children might be like this. I don't listen. You'll get it. <laughs> that's for grown-ups. We just that's something we have to accept by faith. Jesus wasn't Jesus on the cross anymore. He was sin itself. Now, but as a result of that. He became our sin that we might, what does the Bible say, Tolliver, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, that we might become righteous? What does it say? Read it. Oh. Read it, boy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so Jesus was made sin. Remember, son, Deshaun? I said every, in other words, there's always a parallel. This. So if Jesus was made sin, we had to be made something too. We, well, we can be, we can be made something too. So what do we get to be made? For he has made him mm. to be sin for us. Who knew no sin? Sin for who? Us. Sin for us who knew no sin. Mm -hmm. And that's what you said earlier. That we might be made the righteousness of God. That we him. might be made the righteousness of God. And that's as... Oh, not mysterious, mysterious. That's as spiritual as the other side. How do you get to become righteousness itself? God looks at us and he sees righteousness itself. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. If we're in Christ. Mm -hmm. So now let's trail, let's follow, walk this back and see how we got here. So we were talking about idols because Rachel took one of her father's idols. What's an idol, children? Vincent? A false god. A false god. Now, is there such thing as a false god, really? Is there, in other words, is there a god other than Jehovah? No. no. So, a false god has to be, okay, if you dress up as, uh, I don't know, I can't think of any. If we're having a party and we say, okay, you can all wear funny costumes, and, and you dress up as a pair of skates. I know, that's ridiculous. You dress up as a pair of skates. Are you really skates? No. <laughs> okay. So a false god has to be something pretending or, what's the word I want to use? Not pretty, masquerading. That's not the word I want either. I'm thinking, trying to think of something for the children. A false god has to be something pretending to be a god. And what, who or what would that be? Yes, sir. A demon. A demon. And what's a demon? Yes, Olivia. A fallen angel. A fallen angel. And what's a fallen angel? Yes, Olivia. The, eight, the three angels that. Three fall. angels? Only three? I know what you mean. She's thinking of the third. That's okay. Don't say three, but say everything you were going to say. It's not three, but The right. angels that went with Lucifer and that. That's right. You're right. You know what? It was very smart that she said three, even though it's not three. Mm -hmm. she, that means she was listening and learning. She interpreted third as three. That's really good. Mm -hmm. That's very intelligent. That's very intelligent. It's not three, but that was good um, conversion. Math conversion, Mr. Conversion? Uh -huh. <laughs> no, anyway, so it wasn't three, but you're right. So those angels are not angels anymore. Do they still have all of their angelic powers? No. no. How do angels look? Now, I know we haven't seen them. We don't know exactly how they look, but based on what the Bible describes, Tiffany was first. How do they look? One word. Ugly. Angels look ugly? Oh, sorry. I thought you were I, I know you see. You anticipated. <laughs> the listening skills, level three. That's school talk for those who are like, what does he mean? How do angels look? Beautiful. Beautiful. She's right. The, okay, go ahead, Isaiah. Golden. Golden. All right, Tolliver. 
Glorious. Yes. Olivia. Were you going to say what? Wonderful. Wonderful. Do, do the fallen angels, the demons, still look like that? No. no. How do they look, Symphony? Ugly. Very ugly. Hideous. Hideous. Hideous is a big grown-up word for awful, disgusting, horrible. They are extremely ugly. They lost it because they lost glory. God, the glory no. of God. God is what made them beautiful. Just like God is what makes... Now I'm us beautiful. God is what makes us beautiful. Do you know you? The Bible. There's a verse that says. Be, I'm, I'm gonna paraphrase it because I'm, honey, I'm thinking of that song and I can't get the song lyrics out of my mind. But beautiful are the feet of those. Uh, beautiful are the feet upon the mountains of those who carry the gospel. Did the Bible mean mean that? The, did the Bible mean that everybody who preaches has pretty feet? No. 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 Didn't mean that. So why did it say that, that the people who carry the gospel, their feet are beautiful? Yes. They have, they have beauty because of the, the Holy Spirit is in them. Because of the Holy Spirit. You want to say something? No. What they are doing, they, what their feet are being used for to carry the gospel, the glory of God makes their feet beautiful. The glory of God makes our hands beautiful. The glory of God makes our faces beautiful. Ha ah! Woo! How did. Um, come on, Nell. No. Him too. That's not what I was thinking of. Uh, Stephen. How did Stephen look? When he was dying for Jesus. Yeah. Tell me exactly what the Bible said. Think of the song. Oh, he was glowing. Was like the name C, Steve? He was glowing. What, it, what exactly did the Bible say? He had... Let's look it up. Stephen dying. Acts. Acts chapter... Four. Right? Seven. I was going to say seven. Is it seven? Yeah. But I chickened out. Because I was, didn't want to be embarrassed by the children. I've been embarrassed by the children once too many times. <laughs> but I got 2 Corinthians 5, right? <laughs> All right, so Acts, I believe it's 7. Acts 7. It's funny, these Bible classes, I say one thing and then the Holy Spirit will be like, okay, that's good. No. Yeah, that's my turn. <laughs> All right, Acts 7. Oh, okay, I'm looking at the time. Acts 7. Where, where are we at, Tolliver? Talks about exactly what Stephen looked like. It tells us. It tells us. But I want to read it instead of just saying it. Let me see what I'm find. Okay. Wait, is that Stephen? Yes. Man, it's hot. Let's turn the AC back. Really? <laughs> You're not hot? I'm burning. I'm burning. Okay. I'm not burning. All right. Okay, all right. Okay. Let me see. And when he can die, I'm looking, yep, yeah, I'll find it. And the next day, mm hmm Oh, it's 6.15? Is it? No, it's probably, it's, 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 it's got to be further than that. This is that more. Okay, I'm going forward, forward, let's see. Oh, that's it. Yes? Oh, uh, it's 6, uh, 15. Wait in there. Yes, 6.15. Are you sure? Yes, yeah, it says well, it's with the face of an angel? Oh yeah, okay, that's back then. All right, all right. No, nope. listen, listen to this. It says, listen to this. And all that sat in the council, looking steadfastly on him, saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. He looked, he had the face of an angel. He had the face of an angel. Let's go to this one. Me too. I still want this one. Okay, listen. Stephen's face. Now, you read it in probably another translation. It says glowing. The King James doesn't say glowing. That's all right. He looked like an angel. What? That was his usual? He always looked like that? No. no. That was the beauty of God. The beauty of God. The glory of God. That's why. That's what makes our feet beautiful when we travel to carry the gospel. That's what gives us beautiful hands. I've seen preachers, old preachers with gnarly hands, arthritic hands and knuckles, but their hands were beautiful. 
when they were turning the pages of their Bible to preach the gospel. Okay? That's what makes us beautiful. And that's why demons are very, very ugly. God didn't make them look that way. Okay? Now, let's, let's see if I can walk this back to connect it to what we were talking about originally to see how we even got here. Oh, so Rachel stole one of her father's idols. Um, let's get back to the notes. And we know that this, oh, this now this is the tie-in that I never got to because the Holy Spirit took us a different way or it took us further into it. So what did it mean if an, if an idol is a fallen angel, a false god, it's not really a god, so how could she take one? What does that mean? Yes, Vincent. Um, they make um, statues that look like... They make statues to represent... Yes, Tom. They make statues out of their imagination. They make statues out of their imagination to represent the, that false god. So they might make one of these and say, this is the god. This is God. <laughs> and so her father had some of those statues, and she took one. Now let's get back to our notes now, okay? Let's see. Where was I now? That's uh. Um, no. She took one, and now the last thing we remember is that God spoke to Laban in a dream and said, "What? Don't you dare do what? Talk to Jacob. Say nothing, because he was going to get him." And God said, "Um, don't say anything to Jacob." Okay. All right. Now, images. That's letter B. Idols, false gods. Rachel apparently was not a worshiper of Jacob's God alone. That's something that we heard last week when we listened to Sister Baxter's comments. Remember that? And she talked about Noah, for instance, and his sons. There are many people who are saved and blessed in Scripture. Saved, not in terms of saved going to heaven, but they were saved from destruction. Spared. Spared. They were spared because of the faith of another and faithfulness of another person. So, like Noah's sons, they weren't believers, but God, they were saved from from death because they stuck with Noah, their father, and their, and, and their wives too. You understand? Um, there's many examples. There are many examples of, of that in Scripture. I won't go any further in that. But so, Rachel apparently was not a worshiper of Jacob's God alone. Okay? She wanted to continue to worship her father's gods. Notwithstanding what she had just said in verse 14 uh, through 15. She still held to the false gods of her father, her country, and her upbringing as do many of God's people today. I want to stop there and end tonight. I want to stop on that note. We're going to pick up on at this spot next week. Listen. Rachel was trying to do both. She was trying to serve the God of Jacob along with her husband. Because she mentioned it. Remember? Yeah. She said God took away from our father and gave it to you. You know, she knew, she understood Jehovah was with them. But she also wanted to take one of her father's idols with her for good luck or to be blessed, or what have you. I don't know what she was doing that for. I mean, they had plenty. But you know what? Mm, that sounds like the people of God today. They have plenty. We have plenty with God, but it's not enough. It's not enough. We want some of us in there too, some of our thinking, some of our efforts, some of our works. We want some of the world. We want some good luck. We want, um, oh, I don't know. We want, we want the blessings of the government. We want the support of the government. And we want to, you understand, bless me, almighty Joe Biden. <laughs> I'm, ser I'm serious. Bless me, old Joe Biden. Bless me, O Congress, with thy bountiful benefits. <laughs> no, that's it. Bless me, O thou Congress. Bless me, O Senate. Really? Mm -hmm. All right, but we're going to stop here and pick it up next week. That's not. We're going to see that that's not going to fly. You can't do that with God. Single, clear. Um. 
Something else too. Single clear. Um, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. Any room for anything else? Any other God? No. no. Thou shalt have, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him who him, him too shalt thou serve. Him yeah. only. Him only. Only, only serve Jehovah. Only worship Jehovah. Only believe Jehovah. Only trust Jehovah. Only and his son Jesus Christ and live in his Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Only, 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 only. Listen to me. I'm going to end with this. Do not think that it is okay to step in and out of God. I'm in God. Now I'm in the flesh. No, I'm in God. I'm in the flesh. God flesh. Flesh God. Live. No. You can't get in the flesh and say, I'll get back to God, but right now I want to do some flesh things. You can't do that. First of all, that's going to hurt you. But secondly, God is not going to permit that. He's not going to permit that. There is no husband on earth, and I'm speaking, this could be wife too, but I'm speaking from the standpoint of a husband. There's no husband on earth that's going to let his wife say to him, I actually have another husband down the street. Oh. <laughs> I have another, and there are many awful, wicked, foul, disgusting men throughout history who have done that, they have had a whole, a whole separate secret family. They kept it secret from there. I've known, I know some personally. They had a wife and children and they had a job that, you know, took them away sometimes and they led their wife to believe, oh, the reason I'm only home on weekends is because, you know, my job. But actually, they lived in two different places and they had two different wives and two different sets of children. So that happens. Men, men do that. But also, talking from the standpoint of a man, there's no man alive who's going to allow his wife to say, actually, I have another husband. He lives, he lives right down there, down the corner. So, yeah, you know, I'm his, I'm, I'm his wife too. No husband is going to allow that. We are the bride of Christ. I know one day I'll teach on that, but let me just say it for now. We are the bride of Christ. The church is his bride. He's not going to let you have another husband. No, he's not. God is a jealous God. He's a jealous God. And he doesn't, he doesn't play that. Idolatry is what got Lucifer kicked out of heaven. Pride is idolatry. Pride is when you idolize yourself. So this is not church. I'm not preaching. I'm going to stop here, but I wanted to make that clear. Rachel was trying to serve Jacob's God, her husband's God, and serve her father's God too. She was like, oh, I'm going to need this. Oh, I thought I had it there. I don't see it. Oh, I put it away. Oh, I'm going to need this. I'll sneak this because I need this too. I know we go to church, Jacob, but I need this. I know God said don't do this, but I need to. I need to do this for myself. That's not going to happen. I'm going to shut up because I said we're stopping. I'm going to ask my, sister, my daughter's sister minister, Nini, to pray from right where she's sitting. I will pray from right where she's sitting <laughs> and just close us out, okay? And then somebody asked me, Grayson, that was you. No, that Rachel. wasn't you. Rachel. Rachel did it last week, so I'm going to let Grayson close us out today after you pray, right from where you are. Okay. Father God, I thank you for another Bible class, God. I thank you that you have brought us together, God. I thank you that even through the planned commentary, um, God, you're speaking to us, you're teaching us more things, you're connecting things in the Bible that maybe we haven't looked at. Well, you're, you're showing us the parallels, that you're showing us that you never change. You show us that 
that you've always remained the same. You will always be the same. And I thank you, God, for teaching us. I thank you for loving us enough to teach us. And, to, and I thank you, God, that you trust us with these lessons. You trust us to receive it and to, to live the way that you want us to live. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Come in, Grayson. Great thing. Come on. Come on, boy. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to pick you up so you can say goodbye to the people, okay? And thank them for watching. Thank you. Bye. Say thank you. Bye.